I'd like to extend a warm welcome to everyone joining us wherever you are on the globe. Um, thank you so much for joining us for this very first of what will hopefully be more uh, BT List Live discussions, webinars. Uh, we are very pleased to have our guest, uh, Katie Barnwell, with us today. And I would just like to take a moment to introduce our panelists. Um, I'll start by myself. I'm Drew Most. I'm a translation consultant working in Central Africa. I'm joining you from Yaoundé. And then we have um, Linnell Zogbo. Now, Linnell, if you have done much reading on the history of Bible translation in Africa, mm -hmm. um, you will have come across Linnell's name. She is mm -hmm. a uh, very prolific author. Um, she has her PhD in linguistics from UCLA. Um, she has served uh, for over 30 years as a translation consultant with UBS. She's now retired, and I'm not sure whether to believe that she's retired or not, because she just keeps on cranking out handbooks, um, both in English and French. Um, she, one thing I know about Linnell is she loves poetry, Hebrew poetry, and she's just pouring herself into writing helps in French for those who wish to translate Hebrew poetry into their language. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you for being with us, Linnell. Um, now, I'm looking at the um, list of registrants for our seminar here, and I see that it's right around the number 70, which seems entirely fitting. Of course, that corresponds to the number of the Septuagint translators. So how <laughs> fitting that we would be 70. It makes me wonder if we shouldn't attempt to translate something together and have it turn out miraculously. This could be the start of something new. Um, now, I want to go ahead and, and welcome our other panelists here. Um, as with any good African event, it needs to be done under the patronage of a well-known personality. And I'm very pleased that St. Jerome himself, the patron saint of Bible translators and Bible scholars, has accepted to be the patron for this event. So thank you very much, St. Jerome. Now, I will uh, pass, pass it over to Linnell to uh, keep things rolling here. Over to you, Linnell. Okay, greetings to everyone. I would like to introduce our um, main uh, event for today, who is Katie Barnwell, uh, known Catherine Barnwell, but known to most people as Katie. She's been involved in Bible translation since 1963. She went to begin with Wycliffe Bible Translators, working on in Bembe in Cross River State in Nigeria. And um, she did her PhD on the grammar of that language and finished in 1970. She spent most of her career as a teacher, a trainer, a translation consultant, and she's worked with SIL International, then Seed Company, where she now serves as senior trans consultant. Probably most of you have either been in a workshop or had teaching by Katie or at least have read many of her articles and books. I don't think there's anyone in SIL, LBT, UBS, Seed Company, or any Pioneer Bible Translators, any of those who have not uh, been in contact with Katie's thinking and writing and teaching. So we're very honored to have her with us today. Um, welcome Katie and God bless this time as we move on together. Yes, thank you Linnell. Uh, we want to give a plug for the uh, new re newly released fourth edition of Katie's book, Bible Translation, an Introductory Course in Translation Principles, um, the publication of which prompted us to schedule this event. Um, so we're very grateful to, for, to Katie for accepting to come on and discuss um, not only the book, but uh, Bible translation more generally. I believe Harry has just pasted in a link um, to SIL International Publications promotional announcement 
Um, so there you'll find a link where you can find out more information about the book and order a copy for yourself. I highly recommend it. I've ordered mine and I expect to receive it, fingers crossed, by the end of the year. But one uh, fortunate, <laughs> lucky, providential, one providential attendee of this webinar will win their very own copy. So uh, as kind of the final step of the program for today, I will announce the winner um, later. I wanted to go ahead and answer two very common questions that public, uh, SIL publications have had related to the release of this book. The first of which is, when can we expect an electronic version? Now, that was one of my first questions because I would like to have that book sooner rather than later. I'd like to have it now rather than wait maybe till Christmas. Um, they say they're working on it and they hope to have it out very, very soon, perhaps within the next couple of months. So we're going to keep our fingers crossed, hoping that gets out very, very soon. I know it'll be very popular. And then secondly, a lot of people have been asking, are translations in the works? I know there's a French translation um, of the third edition, which is much appreciated. I think there's a German version, a Spanish version. Um, how many more translations? Um, so a lot of people want to know how many, how long do we have to wait until the, this is translated into my mother tongue? So um, <laughs> they, sales has said that they are currently negotiating translations and what, they, what would help them is if those who are interested in having it translated into a specific language would reach out to them and express that interest in that language and um, let sales know how they might be able to facilitate or help that process. So you can write to them at sales underscore I-N-T-L at SIL.org and they will follow up with you. Okay, so over to you now, Linnell. Okay. Okay, well, before we start in on questions about this book, which we are all dying to get into and see, um, I thought we could start with a few personal questions. Um, uh, I thought it would be interesting to hear a little bit about your childhood and where you grew up, and but most importantly, how did you get interested in Bible translation and how did you end up in Africa? Okay. Well, um, I grew up in the UK. Um, I actually moved around quite a bit but my because my father was an engineer and he got moved around to different places. And, uh, but in Shropshire and uh, Inverness, the far ends of where I was, I grew up in a church-going Anglican family, and I still have my first Bible, which was given me on my fourth day by my grandmother. Um, I have two, had two great aunts who were very influential in my life, and they told me, they were sisters, uh, they told me that they'd prayed for me every day since I was back christened. <laughs> so I have much to be thankful for. Um, it was when I was at university that I really became a committed believer and learned to study, began to study my Bible seriously. And that was also where I um, heard about uh, Bible translation. We had a visit in the Christian Union from George Cowan. Oh, and wow. You know him, <laughs> good, yes. And as soon as, uh, when I heard what the, the need for Bible translation and what was involved, I, I just had in my heart straight away, that's for me. And wow. um, I uh, uh, went and took the first Wycliffe course with John Bender Samuel leading uh, in, uh, um, uh, well, uh, early 1960s. And then the next year I taught on the course. That was the way it was in those days. <laughs> and um, uh, John, of course, was uh, again, very influential. He um, guided me in uh, uh, registering with the School of Oriental and African Studies. And I had my supervisor was M.A.K. Halliday, who's not so well known now, but he was well known in those days. And he oh, was a yeah. wonderful supervisor. Structure, function, uh, grammar the relation between the form and the meaning. So what better tra uh, training could you have for Bible translation? So um, uh, 
then um, John Bender Samuel was in the process of opening up SIL work in Africa. So um, I and my partner Pat uh, were amongst some of the first teams in um, Nigeria. And um, uh, what else was I going to say? Um, uh, that was learn first step was learning the language and uh, collecting texts. And then, then I had a year back in the UK to finish the PhD thesis. So wow. it's a beginning. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. That is amazing and a wonderful story. And many of us too could speak to how JBS, John Bender Samuel, influenced our yeah. life in Bible translation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really, for sure. Okay, well, I'm wondering, so you went to Mbembe and you went there. Last year I, in uh, Jerusalem, I, I had some Nigerian students and they seemed to be related languages to Mbembe or something. So I really wonder what happened in that work and did you finish a translation and is there ongoing work and how, how are things going in the Mbembe project? Mm -hmm. Well, um, the New Testament was published in the major dialect in 1985. Wow. And there was, it has been, was a request early on for some more translation, but in those days, really Old Testament translation wasn't being encouraged. It was only later that really the way opened up for more Old Testament translation. And uh, it seemed that the best way was to get some people trained. So we had two, um, two who are now the two leading translators in the project went and did studies at the Theological College of Nigeria, uh, including studies in Hebrew. And uh, one of them has an MA with Hebrew uh, specialization. And he's now one of the leading, the leading uh, coordinator in the project. So there's much to be thankful for. So Old Testament is still in, in progress. Um, oh. Well, it only started, I think, I can think I can say the 2016, that it really got underway. Okay. Um, and I've been making some visits back, but now I'm doing distance checking with them. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> there, are actually, wow. there are actually three projects now because after the New Testament was published in the main dialect, the two other main dialects, <laughs> wanted their own and in fact when the survey was done in the first place it was touch and go whether it would be considered as three different languages or uh -huh. dialect so it's not surprising they are indeed very different and oh. uh, so the, one of the translators who may be watching i'm not sure is uh, a made a uh, leading translator and the way we do it is i check with him what's he, the the passage is being checked uh, in his own dialect and uh, then, um, and, and the other dialect too, and then the third dialect, he checks it with my, oh, okay. with me sitting in, uh, putting in a few occasional comments. So I would say he's being mentored also as a, as a consultant. So, oh, uh, so some good things happening, yeah. Oh, and that's wonderful, that is an such active, a We have an active translation committee too, local committee. Oh, so you're really, that's a wonderful model for a lot of us to follow. That's wonderful. And I'm glad to hear. Um, so let's now move on to the new book that we're all excited to eventually see. Um, I wondered how the idea for the revision came about. Did you get feedback on the other book or, um, and how did you go about revising and how long did it take? <laughs> That's, That's a lot, a lot of, of questions. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, I think the main motivation was, I mean, I could see there have been a lot of changes in the Bible translation world over the, the last 50 years. And uh, so I knew that revisions were made, were needed. And uh, the public, actually the International Publications Department approached me about they wanted to do a new Print, new, new printing and they gave me the chance to revise. I don't think they expected me to do quite such an extensive revision, but uh, mm -hmm. 
that's the way it talked out worked out because there was a lot to to change but not it's, it's expansion i would say more than the basic basic principles are still the same yeah so uh, how long it, did it take um well I, because i had i wasn't working on it full time but it's taken i would say two and a half years um but i was wasn't working full time on it um oh, okay. so other, other other responsibilities going on yeah. so it has taken quite a while yeah yeah did you also, is, has um, the audience changed in your view of when you first wrote the first book and now well um it's still the primary goal is still trump mother tongue translators and of course nowadays uh, virtually all translators are mother tongue translators yeah. so maybe don't need that term anymore but um the uh but i think i recognize that nowadays the in typically translators are much more highly educated than they were in 1975 when the first yeah. edition was published 1975 was when really well a lot of things were happening the whole um national responsibility national organizations were starting up and um we were seeing the potential for people translating into their own language and realizing that uh, translations are better done by people, speakers of yeah. their own language. So the, and we developed courses for, well, introductory course in applied linguistic, which was how to analyze an orthography for your own language. And then uh, introductory course in translation principles, which was how to translate into your own language. So this was a textbook for that course really initially. That was 75 and then um, this, the second, second and third editions were a bit expanded too. Um. Okay, well, I wonder if, um, how is this book different, would you say? And I, there's a lot of issues we could talk about. Maybe the first thing I would ask is, does this book still have exercises and um, that kind of thing? Did you mm -hmm. expand or? Yes, um, it has exercises. In fact, an, an increased number of exercises, and I've tried to grade them a bit more, sort of easy ones and more difficult ones, and um, also more ch more challenging ones, I should say. And oh. um, also more practice, more practice, I'm trying to think, more practice on um, writing your own language, writing creatively, oh. and also on studying the study, learning to understand how your own language works, especially discourse level features. Oh, I can't wait to see that. I, you know, that's the best. That's been <laughs> well, it's, it's, that's really important. So, yeah. and also more, uh, more on Old Testament, more Old Testament examples. Good. Yeah. Good. And, that's um, wonderful. Now, when I'm checking Old Testament, I keep on getting examples. So I think, oh, that'll be a good one for the book. And I, oh, it's too late now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, that's what it was. Yeah. Uh -huh. I was wondering, um, a lot has happened, a lot of water under the bridge, as they say, in translation theory and practice. How what is your own view on translation theory? Um, do you still believe in dynamic or functional equivalence? Or um, what is your theoretical approach in the book? Hmm. Well, um, NIDA's basic principles still hold good. <laughs> um, so I would say that the fundamental principles have not changed. Um, uh, the uh, one of the requests that I had for, about the book was somebody somebody said complained it didn't have anything about relevance theory. Well, of course, relevance theory didn't even exist when it was written. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I have now included a couple of chapters with uh, interaction and uh, input from Ernst Augustgut. Um, so the but that, I would say that's not a change. It's rather an additional insight okay. rather than. A in the basic principles yeah okay um i, I saw is um 
I saw something at a website, but I don't know. Is there something connected now to the book? Yes. Um, there's, uh, at the end of each chapter, there's uh, sec sections called online, online, ma online material helps, or um, there's also some links to videos, and oh. also a section on for further reading. And if we have time, I'd like to briefly show at the end of this um, how that works, uh, just to give you a oh. glimpse of it. And uh, Gail Sheenan, who was the one who worked out the how to put it on the web, and uh, I think it's quite exciting, and I think it's got potential for expansion too. Um, but you can jump to all the PowerPoints and um, uh, handouts, what used to be handouts, and um, also certain videos you can watch and also for the for further reading a number of the items have direct links so you can jump to the article in bible translators in the bible translator or wow. wherever and read the article so i hope it will help and encourage people to uh, use those resources more especially for sort of more advanced students so uh -huh. we'd hope that maybe help people like biblical scholars who are preparing to help with exegetical checking and so on. So it wow. provides access to further resources. Um, I would hope that one day we'll be able to get it to link with Translators Workplace. That hasn't happened yet, but hopefully in the future. Yeah. Uh, it sounds very modern. I admire you're on top of all these tech uh, ways to link up and everything. That's wonderful. Well, as I say, it was it was uh, Gail who worked out the technical link way to link it, but the, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so you know, there's been a lot of partnership in this. Yes, <laughs> that's great, though. That's wonderful. I'm wondering. I'm thinking about two areas I wanted to ask you about. One was, um, you know, we always say we want faithful, natural, and comprehensible comprehensive or comprehensible translations do you think that still holds or yeah, are yeah. you have a change in your in how you view this no, that's that's accuracy accuracy clarity and naturalness are the three key words we've focused on but we've okay. also addressed what we call acceptability which i think is also keeping your specific audience in mind and translating with a particular audience in mind. So I would say that's, again, an addition rather than a change. Um, yes. But uh, what kind like of translation? Like Scopus, you mean? Yes, Scopus. exactly. Yes. And in fact, there is a section of the book now, uh, the, the seventh part of the book. It has um, uh, information on that, including how to write a translation brief. Uh, to, to oh, to, wonderful. You know, and your translation for your particular situation yeah oh that's great the other thing i wondered is have you got any new insights into key terms because i always <laughs> turn to that part in your book and think about it and um any new insights on key terms it's always a very hard subject i think yeah yes no i well there is more and a little bit more on old testament but not as much as i would wish there could be but also particularly guidance on trying to help people be aware of the resources there are because there are so many more helps now even you know paratext and the yes. access to the access to the biblical terms tool and also um the uh um well just the jump links from the source text the hebrew or greek source text which jumps to so many with well, the lexicon and various other uh helps as well so um all i can say is helping people be aware of those but um oh, that's, that's testament expert by yeah. far you're you're the old testament expert <laughs> and uh, so <laughs> it's trying to help people know what they know and what they don't know and that's something i always feel i need to know what i don't know and know uh -huh. where to find, find what the help i need uh -huh. <laughs> so, that's yeah. that's really good i'm sure it will be so helpful um do you deal i'm wondering 
of course, Drew said, you know, I'm wondering if you deal at all with orality or poetry? Um, well, uh, orality certainly is a focus. Um, now, of course, that's not a beginning focus. In, in, if you read Snyder's early writings, he stressed orality too. And the yes, fact he did. That translations are more often heard than read. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, so I have tried to address that and to talk oh. about the use of or orality in both drafting translations and checking and testing them and also in reproducing them, in, uh, sharing the scriptures through audio means. I mean, oh. in Nigeria now, everybody has their cell phone and there's huge potential for sharing that way. Uh, so or, in the process of translation and in the spreading of translation, orality is, is very important. So, I mean, I have tried to address that and also to give links to other places where that issue is addressed. Um, Oh, that's great. Yeah, because, yeah, it's really the future, isn't it? Um, well, you can't have good oral translations unless you do written translation, I think. But uh, even so, you it's an issue that we can't get around right now in this world today. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and I think it also, I, I don't like to peop see people think of only oral translation. I mean, there are some yeah. situations where that's appropriate. But for most projects, I think you need both uh, oral production and written, because if you're going to study the Bible in, in depth, you go to the yeah. written translation. Um, yeah, I think but, we agree. We agree a lot on that point. I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, well, let's, um, let's turn a little bit away from the book and talk a little bit about um, translation consultants and their training. I'm wondering, what do you think to, in today's world is the best way to train translation consultants? What are the profiles that we need? Um, and uh, how do we go about getting that the people that we need? <laughs> well, um, I think what, one very valuable source is people who worked on their own translation, translation in their own language. Because uh, experience in translating, I would say, is a, a very valuable um, asset, <laughs> a learning process. Uh, and then um, I think two, two things in particular, further studies, uh, including yeah. in-depth study of the biblical languages. I think that's something that's come much more into focus and for which there is much more potential these days. Excellent yes. courses, both on-site and also online courses. In fact, I'm trying to brush up my rather scanty biblical Hebrew, Hebrew with um, uh, doing an online course. So uh, there's huge potential just both for initial training and ongoing training for consultants. And older consultants who haven't exposed, had exposure to some of these things can get updated. Um, so uh, training and then mentoring. Um, working alongside experienced consultants, beginning to do it on their own and getting some input on it. So I think you, it's again, it's the, the selecting people who are both committed and really uh, going to be really take this seriously as a God, a God calling and yes. give all the support to get through. And um, I'm concerned that somebody shared recently that they felt that some consultants were dropping out because they hadn't had sufficient help and guidance and uh, opportunity. So I think that is something we seriously need. Those of us in, in any, those who are in administrative roles really do give attention to, to really following through to help those who have begun the training follow through and complete and really get into service. Mm. What do you think about you know, formal consultant training in workshops, or what do you think about maybe one book workshops that oh, um, yes. Ernie and I have been experimenting with that a little bit in Jerusalem mm -hmm. and seems yep. to have a lot of potential. Absolutely, absolutely. I think both at the consultant level and the translator level, because for translators, you know, you have your initial training but then it has to be followed through 
by feedback as you translate. And one book workshops are an excellent way to really help people, especially get into new areas, um, with mm -hmm. poetry, for example, or whatever, starting your first start translating Psalms. Or, and th I'm really grateful for the good work that you and your team have done in that area, and we've benefited from it. Um, so uh, yes, all of those are very important. Uh, I'd I'm, like to... I'm, won I'm wondering too, it's, we're now in such a funny situation in the world with COVID and um, our yeah. economic crises around the world. What do you think the future of Bible translation is in terms of our organizations and UBS, SIL, and all of these? Do you, do you have any vision or, or dream or ideas on how we should move forward? Well, um, I'm very thankful that there is much more emphasis on partnership uh, nowadays. And the ETEN, the every tribe, every nation, um, those who are seeking to promote partnership, and um, both at the local level, at the national level, and the international level. So I think there is still a role for our organizations, but we need to be ready to work together and um, to uh, really, uh, well, be cooperative, be listening to each other, um, and to plan, pro plan projects in a way that is realistic, both getting um, good goals and set up, but not putting too much time pressure on the, on the translation, such that people have to meet their goals at the expense of doing a rather hasty translation, which isn't as good as it could be. So trying to find the balance on those things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, well. Well, I think I've come to the end of my, my questions. And thank you for answering, taking so much mm -hmm. time and reflection in answering. I wonder if um, Drew would think that we could look at some things you want to show us or anything you want to share with us. Um, um, have we got time, Drew? Drew? Yes, yes, go for it. Yep, we've got yeah. plenty of time. I think that would be that would be great. Yeah, so why don't okay. you go ahead and show us what you had in mind? Okay, I'll show you two things. One is just a, a summary of um, the uh, uh, things, uh, changes in the Bible translation world the, to which we're adjusting oh. and to see an adjustment going on. Um, first thing was the sort of the formation of national Bible translation organizations, national and local ownership, and involvement of local churches and communities in the translation process. And that was happening, I think, starting from the 1970s. And then another big change has been the availability of software and online resources designed for translation, Paratex. Paratex has been a wonderful help much appreciated and still developing. Um, and uh, again, the training uh, is, needs to include awareness of these resources and beginning to teach how to use them. The value of partnership and teamwork, recognizing different roles, sort of some people have more skill in exegesis, others have more skill in creative writing, creative uh, writing natural and uh, well-formed translations, creating translating poetry, you need to be a poet to translate poetry. Developing a translation brief, Scopus theory, we already mentioned that. About focus on oral communication, that again we've also mentioned. More on to Old Testament translation in progress and links to online resources. And these are some of the changes that have been happening and to which we're all, I think, trying to respond in the um, uh, in the Bible translation world. And I'd like to give you just a glimpse of those um, uh, online resources. And I'm going to share screen again and see if I can get this up. Um, this, is, this is where I get panicky as to whether I'll be able to find the right place. 
yes, um, here we are. This is the SIL website, which uh, has these additional resources. And actually, you can access these right now, even if you don't have the book. Um, I think Drew had the link in his, the, what he sent out, which you can use to access that. So here are these online resources. And in the book, at the end of each chapter or most chapters, there are three headings, the um, uh, links to online materials, which has PowerPoints and other documents, which uh, supplement the information in, the, in that lesson. And then there are also some links, not so many, but to websites and videos. There's a nice one on introducing different kinds of translation and um, that you can just click on and watch. And then there's also for further reading. Now, uh, just to Katie, demonstrate. Katie, have, have you yes. shared your screen yet? We're not seeing anything here. Oh, you're not. Oh, dear. Well, I'm sorry, then. Um, please, please try again. Please try again, right. Um, get back into Zoom. Uh, Now it's starting. Yeah, now it's yes. starting. There we go. Oh, you're watching. Good. Yes. Okay. You're now seeing. Okay. Well, thank you for pointing that out then. Yes. Okay. So all I did so far was to show how to jump to that link, which is in the, the handout that um, Drew sent out. And you can access this even if you don't have the book yet. And then there are these um, resources and um, you, uh, the, the seven parts to the book, and um, you, for each part, there's different chapters. So if you want to find the resources on a particular chapter, you have to select the um, part that you want. So I've, if I'm looking for something in chapter two, for example, um, what was the example I was going to use? Um, yeah. Um, Yes, chapter two. Uh, so I click on chapter two, and uh, there I can see the uh, drops. It drops down to show the different things that are accessible there. Um, now this is a little bit experimental. This uh, website, and um, we had an agreement that we'll try it for three months and then we'll review and maybe it can be imp improved. But um, you see, if you click here, comparing. Uh, this this is for a PowerPoint. So the uh, PowerPoint, I hope, is coming up uh, for drivegoogle.com. Oh, here it comes. Okay. And um, sorry, it seems to take a little while to come up and it seems to be taking longer than it usually does. <laughs> um, okay, so here's the PowerPoint. And um, so you can you can you can see if you want to show it as a slideshow, you've got two options. You can use the Google Slides, which is here. I'm not going to do that because it takes quite a little time to come up. But you Katie, can also download it. Katie, the PowerPoint's not showing up for us. You need to click to that tab. Click click on which? The the PowerPoint isn't showing up for us. It must have opened in another screen. Oh dear. Okay. Well, I'm sorry about that. Okay. Oh, well, here, it goes. here it is. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe I should should just leave it at that. But so you you saw the resources, did you? But not the actual PowerPoint. No, we actually are seeing the PowerPoint now. It was very slow, but it came. Oh, good. All right. Good. Okay. So you can you can watch it as a PowerPoint through Google Slides or you can just click on the down, download ang, uh, 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 arrow up here and it will download to your computer. And I find personally that's the easiest way to use it because then you've got the PowerPoints already. Just, you just need to have a folder on your computer where you keep them and to access them easily. And then you've got them even if you don't have a, 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 an internet link, you can you watch them. And uh, so I just wanted to to show that how the PowerPoint links. And then for the further reading, you see the here are some of the suggestions for further reading in the book. 
and um, here's one from NIDA. Um, and if I can, I can click on that now, I hope this is going to work. Um, Katie, you can switch that tab again. We're still seeing the PowerPoint. Oh dear. Um, you're still seeing the PowerPoint. Okay. Okay, so let me. So you tab on the left. Okay. Okay, oh, it just came up with the, with the Bible translator. Okay. Oh, you get seeing that now. Okay. That was what from my clicking on the um, other resources. So there you can jump straight to this article by NIDA um, uh, talking about the basic values of translation and so on. So um, there's a lot of uh, uh, further resource links in that way. So um, I think I'll, that's, I'll leave it at that. Um, there are other things I could show you. There's some nice videos on um, biblical cultural background. There's some by Anne, Anne Campari, who did, um, well, there's a beautiful one we just watched on uh, grapes and the, how the vine works for people who are translating so many references in scripture to grapes, grapes and vines, um, you, they've got the, uh, information right there to have a look at to see how it worked so i think um i will stop it at that and try to get back into the um i'll stop sharing and get back into the zoom room okay that's it are you back with you yeah oh yeah, got my mic. Okay. Yeah, good. Thank you so much for sharing that, Katie. A lot of exciting developments that I know will serve a lot of people. So are we allowed to go on that resource site and have access to everything, even if our copy of the book hasn't arrived yet? Is that permissible? I or Yes, I believe that's, that's the case. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. And well, it's a, a site nice. that I would like to see developed. I think even like adding you know, there are many consultants who are much more widely read than I am who may be able to add links for certain other um, topics, addressed to specific topics. So I think there's potential for development of that. Okay, sorry. Uh, yes, no. Um, so, uh, Paul O'Rear has volunteered yes. his services on the discussion on the chat here on the Zoom webinar. Um, he would be an excellent person, wouldn't you, Paul? to uh, follow up and help us develop this. Um, so good. All right, we're gonna move on now. I'm, I'm looking forward to announcing the winner of our book giveaway. And um, the person, the attendee who is winning their very own copy of the book um, is Donna Toolman. Congratulations, Donna. Now I see there's a button here where I can allow Donna to talk. Should we allow Donna to say something? <laughs> Do we put her on the spot? Yeah. Sure. You want to say something, Donna? Can you um, unmute yourself? And, yes, uh, hello. Thank you so much. That's wonderful. <laughs> I'm so encouraged. I uh, read Katie's book when I first came into translation. So this is 20 years later. I'm, it's really exciting. Thank you so much. No, well done. Um, a special thanks to Gail and the entire um, SIO International Publications team who offered to give away a copy. Congratulations. Um, additionally, for those who were not as, um, who were not recipients of special providence this day, can however take advantage of the continued promotional price, reduced price, which is available. Um, maybe if I can multitask here, I will paste that link in. So Gail and her team has kindly extended the discount that you can take advantage of. We'll find the link for you. Now, Katie, if I could, I would like to um, read out some questions that we've had some, from attendees and from some subscribers to the BT list. Are you, are you ready to go? You still got, still got what it takes? Okay. Can we do it? Can we keep I going? I will try. <laughs> I All will right, try. let's go. <laughs> let's go. Okay, so we have um, a question here from Andrew Person who says, um, it's kind of linguistical in nature, so I'm glad we have uh, not one but two um, doctorate of linguistics here who can answer this question. But he would like to know, in what ways were you drawing on the translation theories of Nida, Beekman, and Firthian linguistics 
of that time, which allowed different systems to be used for different parts of language analysis, rather than requiring one overall system to explain everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I, I should say that when I wrote the book, I was not attempting to develop a new theory of translation. What I was trying to do was to present those principles in a way that would be understandable to second language speakers who are working in their own languages. Um, but I think the, the principles, as I would say, the, NIDA's principles have held good. Um, I would, there's nothing that I would disagree with in what he's written whenever I read his, his writing these days. It's been more extension and, like I mentioned, sort of insights from relevant, relevance theory coming in. But, um, so I don't know whether that fully answers your, uh, your question, Andrew, but um, uh, I was just thinking the term meaning-based translation, which I introduced, was um, mainly a, a, an attempt to explain, to, well, to, to use common language, if you say, something that would be un more readily understandable, but it wasn't a change in translation principles. Um, okay, that's my best attempt. Yeah. Okay. Um, next question. What is one thing that you wish you could have included in the book, but were unable to or didn't in the end? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, I would have liked, uh, as I say, there were more examples on Old Testament translation and more reference to Old Testament translation, but more could have been done. Um, and uh, I, I'd say, you know, there's, um, the, uh, well, just simply, it's an attempt, but um, I realize that it's not all that could have been done. Um, also, another thing that there is much more emphasis on um, the uh, reference to the biblical text. And uh, one of the reviewers said, you know, said you, it, it was queried me on referring to source texts as being, you know, English or French or whatever it is that people were translating from. Obviously, always the ultimate source text is uh, the, the Hebrew or the Greek. And we certainly have put much more emphasis on the desirability of learning more about Hebrew and Greek, learning Hebrew and Greek, um, both for tra translators and um, for um, consultants. In the days when I joined Wycliffe, people talked, it was all talk about New Testament and learning Greek, but Hebrew was hardly mentioned. <laughs> so I'm learning that late in life, <laughs> of trying to develop my scanty knowledge. Mm. Sorry, I think I may have got, gone off the topic a little bit. <laughs> no, that's uh, perfect. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. um, okay, here's an interesting question. Are there any ideas in currently floating around in Bible translation or biblical studies or translation studies that you hear and you think, oh, I just wish that idea would go away. Oh. <laughs> well, um, I would say perhaps two things come to mind. One is that there's a quick and dirty solution that, uh, you know, you can have workshops and have Luke out in two, two workshops or even one. And, uh, you know, that you, you, you can't, you've got to do it thoroughly. Uh, quick translations without thorough grounding and thorough study and work applying the principles, just a waste of time. So that's one. The other thing that I would wish would go away is the pressure to be too quick. And again, that's uh, something that um, happens. And, you know, it comes out of good motivation you, that people want to keep the program moving steadily, want to keep people focused and doing what they should be doing, having set goals. That's good. But the, the goals need to be revised. There needs to be review and, and translators don't need to be put under such pressure that they can't do their best work. I would rather have a little less translation, with, which is a good translation, than a lot of poor translation. No, that's great. Thank you. Um, now that you've worked as a translation consultant and continue to uh, work in the role as a translation consultant, what aspect of the work of a translation consultant do you still find the most difficult? Or where do you feel like your, blind, your biggest blind spot is when you're applying yourself as a consultant to a given text? 
Okay. Uh, uh, maybe textual issues um, to sort of having to resolve, which we've just been checking 1 Timothy, which, uh, 1 Timothy, 1 uh, Samuel, and uh, the, um, uh, there's, a, there's one particular reference where it says this is the most difficult textual uh, textual issue in the whole Bible. <laughs> and how to really study such things and make good judgments um, when there are conflicting evidence and really trying to uh, make the best choice. Fortunately, there are many good resources and there are more under development, but uh, I would say that's a challenging area. Uh, also, perhaps um, when you have Go to ahead. work with translation. I'm blessed in Mbembe that I don't have to use a back translation because of my knowledge of having learnt the language in the past and uh, fortunately I can still understand although I, I've lost some of the ability to communicate speak to speaking because of having been out of the area for many years but uh, getting a good back translation is very crucial too um, in consulting. Um, you know, when I encounter a, a textual issue, a particularly naughty textual issue, I take great comfort knowing that there was a recently released um, language of wider communication version that simply made a list of all the passages that were too difficult because of textual issue, issues, and they omitted them. So I, I take great comfort knowing that I've at least <laughs> attempted something in those passages. So well done for sticking it out and not just omitting them. Of course, not to put into question anyone's scoffos for their translation, but of course it will, we'll have to have tailored approaches for each project, but good, good for um, applying yourself well, to that. Um, there, are good, there are good references. Go I find the NIV study Bible has, is very, has very helpful footnotes that can be sometimes replicated usefully. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Um, if, if there is anybody attending who is looking to teach uh, translation principles for the very first time, they're feeling scared, they're feeling nervous, they're not feeling up to it, what would you say to them? Would you say, quit now while you're ahead? Or what would you tell them? <laughs> Go in and try and enjoy yourself. <laughs> and, uh, just um, relate to the, those you're trying to train, listen to them, be ready to share your own experience, even your own nervousness openly, and um, you know, and even share your mistakes. And uh, you will find that people will respond to you and uh, um, will help you and you'll begin to relax and work together with them. Um, so I guess that's one thing. But the, the, tra dance, the training manual that goes with the textbook itself of course, has got um, a section a section on um, you know beginning to train translators and principles involved and goals to make, um, and uh, so I would suggest that they have a look at that. Mm -hmm. Good. Yes. No. You've certainly um, given a beginning translation consultant a leg up when it comes to teaching principles for the first time. What a blessing! What a gift! to have a textbook and a teacher's guide which have gone through several editions um, by such an experienced um, consultant and um, instructor as yourself. So we greatly receive this fourth edition and we look forward to seeing um, for years to come the, the fruit that the Holy Spirit will bring about as a result of new translators being trained up and um, as whole Bibles and portions and everything that will come about as this as this book uh, is published and gets into the hands of those who are going to use it. What we would like to do now is um, take a moment. I've asked Harry if he would just uh, lead us in a short time of prayer just to um, thank the Lord for you, Katie. Thank the Lord for this book and pray a word of blessing over, um, over you and your work in the book and just that we would commit all of this into the Lord's hands. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for that you've blessed Katie's life. Thank you for her work and her career, and we pray that it goes on for years more. Thank you for the books she's written. We pray that this book especially will be blessed and used all over the world to help people to translate your word into their languages, into many other languages. We thank you for 
all the people that Katie has trained, and one of them, there's a lot more people that she's trained, and the people she's trained and the people those have trained, she has many consultant grandchildren and maybe even great-grandchildren. And we thank you for that we bless the work that she's done. Continue to give her good health and good ideas. These things we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Harry. I think that brings our time um, together to an end. And um, just know that Wayne and I, as moderators of the BT List, uh, as time permits and as um, panelists make themselves available, we hope to host um, more um, BT List live interview discussions like this. But we want to thank you, Katie, for being our very first, for um, not only being a pioneer in the uh, field of Bible translation, but also helping us pioneer um, this new avenue of Bible translation discussion. So I would like to allow um, Linnell or Katie to have the final word to close things out. Oh, just let me say that this has been a wonderful privilege. God bless you, Katie. Love you. Thank you. Bless you. Bible translation is, is we've got, it's an exciting time. So many opportunities now that we've never had before. So many resources, so many people involved. Now is the time to really go for it with God's help and his guidance. Bless you all. <laughs> Amen. Well, thank you so much, Katie. Thank you, Linnell. Thank you, Terry, for interpreting for us. Thank you, Harry. And thank you, of course, to all of our attendees. And once again, congratulations, Donna, on your uh, free copy of this exciting new book. Well, if anyone has questions or comments or would like to follow up on anything that they've heard mentioned in this webinar, you can email me directly um, and I will follow up with you. And um, if Zoom has followed my directions, there will be a recording made available on the BT archives. We'll let folks know when that's, when that's uploaded. That's great. Okay. Thank you, Harry. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>